One friend in that's been used in the community for a really long time is Daiji Show. I personally really like it. They also have an OLED theme which lets you darken the back so it looks really good. There's another front end that you've probably heard by now, Beacon. And I think Beacon is actually one of the better options available. If you've used IG Show before and you're happy with it but you want to try something different, let me show you what Beacon looks like and what the pros and cons of it are. This is going to be a general setup guide for Beacon and how to use it. Let's hop in and I'll show you a little bit more about Beacon. This is what my beacon launcher looks like when it's all set up and ready to go. I've got all the systems on the top. We also get some status icons in the top as well, of course. It tells us a little bit more about the game at the bottom. There's also a search menu so you can navigate your game library a little easier. You can change the navigation from cards to bubbles, grid, list, or you can use the default one, which is the gallery. Bubbles kind of looks like what the PlayStation Vita look like. It doesn't look too bad, definitely not my taste, but it is there if you want it. There's the list option which shows us a big cover art for the game on the side. The grid option also looks really good, but I personally like the gallery option. This gives us a nice clean interface with all our games on here. You can use the bumpers to navigate your game systems, and pressing Y opens up the settings menu. In here you can do a couple different things like add new platforms with this little plus in the bottom. We can add our different scraping options. There's a nice preferences menu, which lets you do things like change the background style. You can also adjust the font, enable or disable the favorites menu. You can also adjust things like the aspect ratio in here or disable the background music for the menu or the system. There's also options in here to swap the ABXY buttons and use a 12 hour format clock. They also have a discord server. So if you want to get in touch with the creator, you can go there and offer your insights in how to make this better. Another big feature of this is using SteamGridDB.com. This lets you use some pretty artsy looking icons for your games. I just think it looks so clean, especially on the portal with this nice OLED display. You can also access the apps menu by pressing B. This lets you access all your other Android apps. Let's hop in and I'll show you how to get this all set up. Once you start up Beacon, you probably want to do a couple different things. You definitely want to set it as your default launcher. To set this as your default launcher, pull down on the status bar at the top, go to your settings menu, then search for home, and this is going to show up with your default home app. Click on that, then you can select whatever launcher you want. Now as soon as you press the home button or start up the device for the first time, this is going to instantly boot into Beacon. Now that we've got Beacon set as our default launcher, we have to set this up. The first thing you want to do is to add all your platforms. Click the plus in the center. There are a couple different options available to us here at the very top. You want to select your platform type. I'm going to start at the very top and work my way down the list. So I'm going to start by adding the Android games. We need to go through and select all our Android games. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the ones that I have on my device here. Now that I've selected all of those, I'm just going to click add platform. You can also change the aspect ratio for the box art at the bottom. Click add platform and now it shows up in our status bar. Some of the icons might look a little squished, but you can change them to whatever you prefer. So if we don't like the box art on one of our systems, hold your finger down on it, click edit, then just click scrape box art and it's going to come up with a bunch of different options. We can choose whichever one we prefer. Some games will only have one. If you want more cover art options available to you, go to the settings menu, click on scraping, then just make sure to add a Scream Scraper account. You can also sign in to a steamgrid.db. This will probably give you the best box art for a lot of Android games. If you don't have an account, go to steamgriddb.com and sign in to get your API key. Once logged in, click on your profile, then click preferences, then click on the API page and click generate API key. Now that we've added our account, it shows up as checked on the list. And if we want to rescrape that game, we can just hold our finger on it, go back to the edit menu, then go scrape box art. We can see the initial one we found up here, but down at the bottom, we have all the Steam Grid DB ones. These look a lot better and we have way more to choose from. I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to say yes. Then that automatically puts that on for me. As you can see, the cover art is a little skewed, so we can change the aspect ratio in the settings. Press Y, then just press the little pencil, then scroll down to the bottom of the list. Click on change box art, 
and you want the one that says Steam Grid DB. Then just go save. Now this should show up looking a lot better. So you can go through all your different games and fix the box art. It might be able to auto change a lot of these ones here. With that Steam Grid DB automatically selected, a lot of these are looking much better. Occasionally you'll find one that you'll want to change. Just go through here and change them as you see fit. I'm going to change the one for Dead Cells. These ones from Steam Grid look much better. So I'm just going to go through here and set these up later, but let's add the rest of our systems first. Going back to the settings menu with Y, then we just have to go through here and add the rest of our systems. So I started at Android. I'm going to work my way down the list with all the systems that I have. For 3DS, I've already installed Citra, so I'm going to select Citra from the list. Then it's going to ask you to select your ROMs folder. Click on the menu button at the top left. Select where it is. Mine is on my micro SD card, so I'm going to select that. I put it in a ROMs folder. Then I'm going to select the 3DS folder. Then just click use this folder and click allow. It's automatically going to pick up the box art size for it. But if you're using anything else, like if you're using Steam Grid DB to pull those up, you can change that there. I'm going to leave this the default just with this 3DS, just to see how it is. To scrape that particular system again, if it's missing anything, click this little button here and it'll start syncing. I'm going to add DS next. I installed Drastic for that. Then I'm going to select the ROMs folder. It automatically pulled up the last folder, which was on the micro SD card. So I can just click my ROMs folder at the top. Then I can just select the Nintendo DS folder. Then just click add platform. And add Game Boy in here. Game Boy is a little different because it is using RetroArch. So I'm going to scroll down my list till I see the RetroArch version I'm using. I'm going to select the RetroArch core. For this one, I'm using Gambate. I'm going to click on that. Then I'm just going to select the ROMs folder again. Add platform. Then just scrape the ROMs. You're going to want to do this for all systems that use the RetroArch cores. For Game Boy Advance, I'm still using RetroArch, but I am using the MGBA core. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then go up. Select my folder, use this folder, allow, just click OK. For Dreamcast, I still use RetroArch, and I'm using the Flycast core for that one. For Genesis, I'm using the Genesis Plus GX. You can also use the Genesis Plus GX wide core. You are going to have to go back to RetroArch and download these cores to get them to work correctly. This might take a little while, but you're going to have to go through all your different systems to set up the icons the way that you want. Once it's set up nicely though, it looks really clean, and I honestly love how this looks. For DS, I've left the default icons. I might swap these over to Steam Grid as well. All my Game Boy Advance games showed up correctly too, I didn't have to change anything there. Game Boy Color looks like it scraped all perfectly as well. All the GameCube icons change by themselves, and I didn't have to do anything in this menu. The NES icons all look really good too. Dreamcast looks like it works well too, all the icons are showing correctly. Sega Genesis looks really good too. The NES icons look really good, but there are a few that are a little squished, so I might have to go through here and fix those. Overall, I think he did a really good job, and this has evolved quite a bit since the first time I've looked at it. I also really like how he's got an Android games menu now. Since the Android ecosystem is evolving, there's a lot of different games we can now play on Android. I like how easy it is to scrape your box art now, and it makes it much easier with Steam Grid on there too. This gives us a ton of different options to choose from. You can really customize your library to your liking. It's also quite affordable. I'll put the price on the screen so you can see how much this cost. I do think it's worth it, and he's done a really good job maintaining this. It's probably a good idea to wait for these to finish syncing. If you start editing these items and they're syncing still, it might not finish correctly. This might take a little while, but on decent internet, this shouldn't be too long. Most of the systems have finished scraping. There's only four left. That's pretty quick considering how many games I had in there. If you want to add another game, all you have to do is just put it in the micro SD card in the folder that the game is in, then press Y, and hit rescrape on whatever system it was in. If you want to add another Android game, go back to that menu, click the little pencil, and just find the game that you're looking for and add it to the list. It's really easy. I can put something like Hunt Down in there, click Save, and it should automatically add it into the list. Let's just make sure that that was added. You can actually see the icon change real time. That was pretty cool. This Vampire Survivors one looks a little odd, so let's go ahead and fix that. To get into any of your games, once it's linked, all you have to do is click on it. It'll load it up. Then once you're in your game, if you want to get back to the home screen, just press your home button, and it'll take you right back to the launcher. 
it's a good idea to go through all your different systems just to make sure that they work. For things like 3DS, you will have to load up the emulator first and set it up. I had to go to my apps, loaded up the apps menu. Then I had to add the file location with all the ROMs. I also had to go through the settings and set up the gamepad. Once the gamepad and the ROM location was set up, they show it all in here. Then the game's loaded fine. To fix DS, you have to go to changed options, load new game, then click on this little plus here to add the location for the storage. Then just select the file with all your ROMs. Then I'm just going to click allow to give it permissions to access the games in that folder. And all of them are now showing up correctly. Then just click exit. And now the game should start up. You can also get rid of this on-screen display by clicking this little menu here and clicking this little button at the top. You will have to do the same thing with Dolphin. You're going to have to load it up, set your controls, and show it where the games are before they start from the front end. If you try to start it from here without doing that, it's just not going to work. To add a game to the favorites menu, hold your finger on the game and just click favorites. Now it shows up on the favorites menu at the very start. You can also turn this favorites menu off by going to the settings, going to preferences, and then just unchecking the favorites tab. I personally like having it, so I'm going to keep it on there. By default, I think this looks pretty good as is, but you can change some of the background options. This is the default option. It's just the waves going in the background. Heading over to the settings, then going down to the preferences menu, and then just clicking the background style will let you change a couple different things. This is the bubbles option. It's pretty hard to see on an OLED display, but you can kind of see some bubbles going in the background there. Floating rectangles is pretty cool. It's a very minimalistic background, but it does look very clean. Fireflies is also really neat. Very minimalistic, but it does look very clean and professional. Rain will just have some rain going in the background. With an OLED display though, it's extremely hard to see. You can see it in person, but I just can't pick it up on video. This is one of my favorite options here, which is the PlayStation 1. You can just see the PlayStation icons floating around in the background. The next one is the game screenshot. A lot of these icons just look really good in general. Then you can do a game screenshot and blur. It's the same thing, but you just can't really see the screenshot very clearly. The one under that is platform background, if available. This one doesn't seem to really work on the 3DS for some reason. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, GameCube, NES, Dreamcast, and Sega Genesis all didn't show a background image for me personally. I'm not sure why this wasn't showing up for me. The last option is just wallpaper which is basically what it sounds like. It just lets you select whatever image you want on the back. This is also really nice. I like the game screenshot background, the one without blur. The one with blur is pretty nice too. It just kind of adds a soft background to it. Both of these look really nice. Remember for RetroArch, you will have to go in and download those cores before you get anything working. On the main menu, just click online updater, core downloader, then just go through this list and select the cores you're looking for. So I've downloaded Gambate for Game Boy Color and the original Game Boy games. I've also downloaded the MGBA Core for Game Boy Advance, the Moosin Core for NES, the SNES 9X Core for SNES, the Flycast Core for Dreamcast, the Genesis Plus GX Core for Sega Genesis. But the widescreen one does work in a couple different games, so I'm kind of going back between these two. I wouldn't recommend using the PSP core or some of the other cores for higher end systems. The PlayStation 1 core, you can use PCSX rearmed. The Saturn cores are also hit or miss depending on the system, but they should work on here. The standalone is usually much better for those ones. Then once you've downloaded or changed any of your settings, just make sure to go to your configuration file and save that. The other thing is that you probably want to do in RetroArch before you hop into your emulation is go to your input. In your input menu, go to the hotkeys, hotkey enable, I use is select. You also want to make sure to turn on the menu toggle. I like to use L3 and R3, so that's just pushing these down. For quit button, I use A. Fast forward toggle, I use the right trigger. Load state, I set to the left bumper. Save state, I set to the right bumper. The controller should automatically work in this too, so you probably don't need to program your inputs, but if you do, it is under this menu as well. It'll show retro pad binds. Then you can just go down this and just fix your inputs if any of them aren't working. For me, it pulled these all up automatically so I didn't have to do anything. Once you change anything, just go back to this main page down to configuration and save the current configuration. Then press back, scroll down to the bottom and click quit. 
What do you think about Beacon now? I think it's grown a lot since I've last looked at it, and I think it's a really nice front end, especially for a device with an OLED or AMOLED screen. A lot of the black backgrounds blend into the bezels, and it makes it just look very professional overall. This is just a nice thing to have on any system. But let me know what you think of Beacon in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and as always, thanks for watching.